Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we are taking an updated look at the battle between the GeForce RTX 3070 and Radeon RX 6700 XT. Now, the last time I did this with a big benchmark video was about a year ago now, so it is time for a revisit. And after the recent RTX 3080 versus 6700 XT update, many of you requested that I do the same with the more mid-range models, so here we are. But before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte and their brand new range of Intel B660 motherboards. A particular favourite of ours is the B660M Aorus Pro AX, as this micro ATX board really does pack it all. A powerful VRM comprised of a dozen 60 amp power stages, complete with impressive looking and very effective aluminium heat sinks. There's loads of USB ports on the I.O. panel, Wi-Fi 6, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and plenty of onboard expansion options. Also, Gigabyte has a competition running right now to win a free Aorus upgrade, so please do check the link in the video description. The RTX 3070 was released back in October of 2020 at an MSRP of $500 US, which of course we never really saw. Then five months later, AMD hit back with the 6700 XT at $480 US, but again, the MSRP was never really a thing. Point being though, that these two GPUs are meant to be direct competitors, though current pricing is far more favorable towards the 6700 XT, at least from a consumer standpoint. At the time of making this video, it's possible to purchase the 6700 XT from Newegg for as little as $600 US, though most models are priced between $700 and $800 US. So still well over MSRP, but they've come down quite considerably given that pricing was up around $900 just three months ago. That said, three months ago, you're also paying at least $1,100 US for an RTX 3070, but today they can be purchased from Newegg for less than $900 with the Aorus Master model selling for $850 at the time of making this video. And that means right now the 3070 is priced a little over 40% higher than the 6700 XT, which is obviously a significant markup, even if the GeForce GPU was found to be 10% faster on average last time we compared them in a 45 game benchmark. Now, a lot has changed in the last 12 months. We've seen numerous driver updates from both AMD and Nvidia, along with a number of significant game updates, and of course many new games such as Forza Horizon 5, God of War, Dying Light 2, Warhammer 3, Halo Infinite, Rainbow Six Siege Extraction, and the list goes on. We're also now testing with a resizable bar enabled for these head-to-head -head benchmarks, so it'll be interesting to see how much of a difference all of these changes make. And of course, for this testing, I'm using our AMD Ryzen 9 5950X test system with 32GB of DDR4, 3200CL14 dual rank, dual channel memory. Both GPUs were tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K across 50 games using Windows 11, again with resizable bar enabled. The driver versions used were Radeon Adrenaline 22.2.3, and GeForce Game Ready Driver 5.11.79, as these were the latest available drivers when I started testing a little over a week ago. Now, as usual, we're not going to go over the data for all 50 games individually, as that would take all day. Instead, we're going to take a close look at the results for about a dozen of them, and then we'll take a quick look at how these two GPUs compare head-to-head -head across all of the games tested in a single graph. Finally, please note all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Dying Light 2, we find very competitive performance between these two GPUs, and quite surprisingly, it's the RTX 3070 that does best at 1080p, winning by a 7% margin, which admittedly is a fairly insignificant margin, but we aren't used to Ampere winning at 1080p over RDNA 2. And this margin does come down to 4% at 1440p. Again, that's unexpected. Usually, as we increase the margin, Ampere starts to run away with it, and that margin was also maintained at 4K. Well, it's 5% at 4K, but you get the point, no noticeable performance differences. The 6700 XT really gets slapped about in Total War Warhammer 3. Here the RTX 3070 was 21% faster at 1080p, 27% faster at 1440p, and then a massive 35% faster at 4K. The 1440p results are most troubling for AMD, as here they struggle to get anywhere near 60fps, which I'd consider the ideal frame rate for this sort of title. Of course, lowering the quality settings will do the trick, but you won't need to do that with the RTX 3070 for a 60fps experience. Thankfully, performance in Call of Duty Warzone is far more competitive, as here we're looking at basically identical performance at 1080p. The RTX 3070 did creep ahead by a 10% margin at 1440p, and this was maintained at 4K, so a reasonable performance uplift there for the GeForce GPU at the higher resolutions. 
Forza Horizon 4 was a very favourable title for AMD, and Forza Horizon 5 is no different. The RTX 3070 did manage to pull ahead at 4K, but again, that's really to be expected. The 1080p and 1440p results, though, were neck and neck, at least when looking at the average frame rate. The RTX 3070 did perform a little better when it came to the 1% lows. God of War is a recently released title on PC that looks absolutely amazing when using the ultra quality settings. The game played well on both GPUs despite the RTX 3070 clearly being the faster solution with 17% greater performance at 1080p, 18% at 1440p, 24% at 4K. So an easy win here for Nvidia that helps justify that price premium. Now the Far Cry 6 data is very interesting. For this testing, I'm not using the ultra quality preset, but rather the dialed down high quality preset, but I'm also enabling the HD texture pack. This resulted in very competitive performance at 1080p and 1440p with well under a 5% difference between these two GPUs. However, it all goes horribly wrong for the RTX 3070 at 4K, as here we run out of VRAM, and as a result, frame stuttering became a major issue, resulting in 1% lows of just 9 FPS. And remember, the RTX 3070 only has an 8GB VRAM buffer, whereas the 6700 XT has 12GB of memory. It's also worth noting that while the 6700 XT is seen to be 43% faster when comparing the average frame rate, it's far worse than that for Nvidia, as this is a complete fail given the game was unplayable under these test conditions. We're certainly starting to reach a point where 8GB of VRAM really isn't enough for the latest and greatest titles, at least without compromising on visuals such as texture quality. F1 2021 includes and enables ray tracing by default when using the ultra high quality preset, which I've done for our testing. This did hurt the 6700 XT, and as a result, the RTX 3070 was 13% faster at 1080p, 20% faster at 1440p, and 29% faster at 4K. So an easy win here for Nvidia, not something they enjoyed in the previous F1 2020 title, which didn't include ray tracing. Metro Exodus Enhanced requires ray tracing support to even run, so this is another game that we tested with ray tracing enabled, of course, opting for the normal quality preset with VRS set to four times. This heavily favors the RTX 3070, allowing it to pull ahead at 1080p by 51% margin, 55% at 1440p, and then 68% at 4K, where the 6700 XT was just completely unusable. This is an NVIDIA sponsored title that was developed before the existence of our DNA 2 GPUs, at least at market. So for that reason, it does heavily favor the GeForce architecture, but it's also a real game that people play, so that's why we've included it. The Rainbow Six Siege extraction performance is very close, at least much closer than what we've seen in many of the games already looked at. The RTX 3070 was 7% faster at 1080p, 10% faster at 1440p, and then 21% faster at 4K, which is a quite, quite a big margin there. Uh, admittedly, things do get away from the Radeon GPU at 4K, but at 1440p and 1080p, it was pretty hard to tell them apart. Both GPUs performed well in Apex Legends, though the RTX 3070 did deliver 11% greater performance at 1080p and 9% at 1440p, but still both pumped out well over 100 FPS. Where the margin could be felt is at 4K, where the 6700 XT managed 79 FPS, to the RTX 3070's 96 FPS, and that's a rather impressive 22% performance advantage for the GeForce GPU. Please note that the Fortnite data isn't directly comparable with the previous data used in the RTX 3080 versus 6800 XT video, as the game has since been updated, which breaks older replays. So here we're testing a completely different match. Unsurprisingly, the RTX 3070 was faster, offering 12% more frames at 1080p, 16% more at 1440p, and a massive 58% at 4K. The 6700 XT really crumbles at 4K here, making it more suited to 1440p gaming. The last game we're going to look at the data for is Cyberpunk 2077, and here the RTX 3070 offered 10% more frames at 1080p, 12% more at 1440p, and 22% more at 4K, though neither was suitable at 4K in this title with well under 60fps on average, which isn't what you'll want from a GPU at these price points. So, based on the dozen or so games that we just looked at, the RTX 3070 looks to be well ahead of the 6700 XT for the most part, especially at those higher resolutions. But before we draw any performance-related conclusions, let's take a look at the data across all 50 games tested. Starting with the 1080p data, we find that the RTX 3070 was 11% faster on average, 
providing superior performance in the majority of the games tested. We also see that the 3070 was slower by a margin greater than 5% in just two of the games tested, being Doom Eternal and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Meanwhile, it was 5% or faster in 34 of the 50 games tested, meaning there were just 14 games where the margin was less than 5% in either direction. The really big wins for the RTX 3070 came in Metro Exodus Enhanced, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, War Thunder, Resident Evil Village, Vermintide 2, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Control, Serious Sam 4, Warhammer 3, and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Then moving to 1440p, we see that the margin increased slightly in NVIDIA's favour. Here the RTX 3070 was found to be 13% faster on average. So again, that is a slight increase over the 45 games that we tested a year ago. If you were to remove the two best games from NVIDIA, so that means Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, the RTX 3070 was still 12% faster on average, and that is of course the beauty of testing such an extreme range of games. Finally at 4K, the RTX 3070 was 19% faster on average, so a big performance difference there for those of you targeting 4K. The only issue of course for the RTX 3070 here being that VRAM usage uh, can be a problem, and it was clearly a problem in Far Cry 6. Disabling the HD texture pack would solve the performance related issues there, but I feel when spending $500, or let's be honest, a lot more than $500 on a GPU for that premium experience, disabling high quality texture packs when available isn't something most gamers will want to do. Still, Far Cry 6 aside, for the vast majority of games available today, the RTX 3070 offers a far better 4K gaming experience. So it would appear, if anything, that the RTX 3070 has aged a little bit better than the Radeon RX 6700 XT, though I suppose that's not entirely true. The fact is numerous driver and game developments have helped the RTX 3070. For example, GeForce performance in Assassin's Creed Valhalla was recently addressed, and this reduced the margin from 10% in favor of the 6700 XT to just 4%. There's also a number of newly released titles that favor the NVIDIA GPUs, such as Warhammer 3, God of War, and Halo Infinite, for example. So that's all very positive for the RTX 3070, but of course, there is still that little matter of VRAM, and although 8GB is still enough for the most part, we are seeing examples where it just isn't enough, though even then you can work around the issue with minimal impact to visuals. That said, the Far Cry 6 results were certainly troubling, given I was using the second highest quality preset, but with HD textures enabled. Under these conditions, the 6700 XT was capable of 60 FPS at 4K while keeping the minimum frame rate above, or well above, 50 FPS. The RTX 3070, on the other hand, was miles off playable performance with constant stuttering below 10 FPS. Again, we're not seeing many examples of this right now, but if you're tossing up between these two GPUs, the 6700 XT certainly looks like the safer bet. Still though, if you had invested in an RTX 3070 a year or so ago now, I'd say you've gotten your money's worth, certainly up to this point, and with the exception of a few examples, the card provided the most premium experience of the two. And this certainly could still be the case in another 12 months, it's impossible to say for sure. Now before we continue, I thought it might be interesting to see what I said 12 months ago when comparing these two GPUs, so let's go do that. The problem with the 6700 XT isn't performance related, rather the issue is quite simply the price. Of course, we know why AMD is not being aggressive on pricing, it simply doesn't make sense for them to do so in the current market. Right now you'd likely buy either of these GPUs if you could find one at a reasonable price, so that somewhat simplifies the process and explains why AMD has gone about pricing the way they have. Still, if you had the luxury of buying whatever GPU you wanted at or near the MSRP, which one should you get? Personally, I'd go with the RTX 3070 for $20 US more because I mostly play Fortnite with my daughter, and the fact that the GeForce GPU is already faster before you even enable DLSS makes it the obvious choice for me. I also only play multiplayer games and typically opt for competitive type quality settings, so memory capacity isn't an issue. I also like the higher recording quality you get with NVENC. It's only a small improvement when recording, but it is better, and if you stream, it's a lot better. The more mature ray tracing support is also quite literally of zero interest to me, but it is an added feature of the RTX 3070 if you care to use it. DLSS support is also still rather limited, but again, if you can take advantage of it, the performance benefits can be quite substantial. So if I could have my pick of either at the MSRP, it would be the GeForce RTX 3070, and for the 6700 XT to be even considered, 
it would need to be priced no higher than $420 US and would probably be my preferred option should it be available for $400 US. So the same price as the 5700 XT. So looking back at that, I don't think my opinions have changed all that much. DLSS quality and game support has only improved and the same is also true for ray tracing. However, what has changed is the pricing and as mentioned earlier, the 6700 XT can now be had for $600 US while the RTX 3070 costs more like $850. And again, that's a 42% price premium for the GeForce GPU. Despite the benefits of the superior ray tracing performance, DLSS, NVENC, and overall better rasterization performance, I don't think the RTX 3070 is worth an over 40% premium. 20% sure, but not double that figure. It's also hard to justify spending the extra money on a GPU with just 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Again, the evidence suggests that that's still enough, but I strongly feel time is quickly running out for 8 gigabyte graphics cards, at least as a high-end premium solution where you don't want to compromise on things like texture quality. If I had to purchase right now at the prices we're looking at right now, I would go with the Radeon RX 6700 XT, no question about it. If the RTX 3070 was just $100 more than the 6700 XT, it would likely it'd likely suck me in even with the eight gigabytes of VRM, though I'd probably have to be willing to upgrade again within a year or two. It's quite clear now that Nvidia really messed up with the VRM capacity of their initial AMP GPUs, or at least they would have if the market didn't go absolutely bonkers. As it turns out, both AMD and Nvidia made out extremely well with both products, given that literally anything they could make sold as soon as they could make it. Well, maybe anything but the 6500 XT. Anyway, that is going to do it for this look at the RTX 3070 versus the 6700 XT in 50 games. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. You can also subscribe for more content. I will probably pitch this against the 3060 Ti next and see how it stacks up there with current pricing and all that sort of stuff. So, of course, make sure you are subscribed for that. And if you'd like to become a Harbour Box community member, we do have Floatplane Patreon. You can sign up to those. You get access to behind the scenes content, Q and A's, our exclusive Discord server. Tim and I are active there chatting with you guys. And then we do a monthly live stream where we chat with you guys live and answer any of your questions there. So yeah, if you're interested in that stuff, check out Floatplane or Patreon. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.